It just sounds so good, it always puts a smile on my face. Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. Today, I am reviewing the Mojave MAD, which is advertised as being smoother than the competition, a.k.a. I'm different than the other girls. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you around $160. Like always, I'll throw some links in the description down below. For this review, I'm running the microphone directly into the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen. My gain is set at around 430, recording 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post, so check the doobly-doo, or the lower third, to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. First up, the microphone comes in a zippered storage bag. You'll of course get the microphone, a hard microphone mount, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, and no physical documentation. Then as far as the build quality, I don't have any complaints about this thing. It has an all metal body as well as a metal mesh grill which has a touch of give to it but nothing out of the ordinary. As we move around the microphone, there are no buttons or switches. On the rear of the microphone, you will find the XLR port. And if it matters to you, and I am not mistaken, this microphone is made in China. Then as far as the specs, this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 50 Hz to 16 kHz, a sensitivity of around negative 53 dB, and an impedance of 400 ohms. Ohm. Ohms. Why did I say that weird? Ohms. <laughs> That's a hard word to say, I guess. Now I am spinning around the MAD to 90 degrees to hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around the microphone to 180 degrees, here is the rear of the mic. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, here we go. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now let's go ahead and test the plosive rejection of this microphone. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the MAD to exaggerate the proximity effect, and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about three inches off with the mic pointed to the corner of my mouth, and here is how it sounds. About one foot away from the microphone, about two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the Mojave MAD. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, now I am typing on the sad W and spacebar keys. Now here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And now here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. And now in order to see how effective the mount and the microphone are at rejecting shocks, I'll go ahead and tap on my desk to see how much of that it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm. Now because this is a handheld dynamic microphone, I'm going to pass it back and forth between my hands so we can see how much of that noise it is able to reject. Now to be annoying and thorough, I'm going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. And now to be even more thorough, here is how the microphone sounds when the grill is completely uncovered. And then if I were to cup the microphone, this is the kind of frequency response you would get. Again, if I remove my hand, here is how the microphone sounds. And then if I cup the microphone's grill again, this is the kind of sound you should expect. Now we're going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone we're reviewing and a bunch of other microphones on the market so we can hear it in context as well as hear how it stacks up against the competition. We'll start on the microphone we're reviewing. This is the Mojave MAD, three inches off, gain set at 430, and here is how it sounds. First up, we are on the Behringer XM8500. This goes for about $25. I am three inches off. My gain is set at 430 still. 
Let's jump back to the Mojave and do a lot more of these. Back again on the MAD, nothing has changed, same distance, same gain setting. Let's jump to another microphone. Next, we are on the Lewitt MTP250DM. This goes for around $80. Three inches off, my gain is still set at 430. Check the lower third and let's do more. In case you forgot how I sound, here is how I sound on the Mojave. Let's do about 10 million more of these. Now we are on the Sennheiser E835. This goes for about $100, three inches off, gains at 430. Let's jump back to the Mojave because we got a lot of work to do, Lucy. Hey, we're back on the MAD, or should I just say mad? But this is how I sound speaking into this microphone. Next one. Now we are on the SE Electronics V7. This also goes for about $100, and I don't think it's work that we have to do. I think it's explaining. We have to do, I think that's how that quote goes. Let's jump back to the Mojave. Hey, we are back on the MAD, and here is how I sound. Recording 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. Let's jump to another mic. Now we are on the Rode M1. This is another $100 dynamic microphone. Same distance, same gain setting. Check the lower third, and let's jump back to the MAD and do some more. Would you believe me if I told you we are back on the MAD? Because we are. And we have a lot more to go, so let's stop rambling. Next, we are on the Audix OM2. This is another $100 dynamic microphone. Very crowded market, but here is how it sounds. Same distance, same gain setting. Let's jump back to the Mojave. We are back on the MAD. I have no time to talk anymore. Let's go to another microphone. Now we are on the Shure SM58, and this sounds very muffled after hearing the Mojave, but this also goes for about $100. Here is how it sounds. Let's do more. I think this is the eighth comparison, and I am recording nine more, so let's keep going. Now we are on the Mic Tech T89, another $100 dynamic microphone, three inches off, gain at 430, and here is how this sounds compared to the Mojave. Let's jump back to it. Hey, we are back on the Mojave again. Nothing has changed. Same distance, same gain setting. Check the lower third. Let's jump to another microphone. Now we are on the AKG D5, which is a $105 dynamic microphone. Same distance, same gain setting. Check the lower third. And let's jump back to the Mojave and do more comparisons. All right, we are back on the MAD again. That's all that I have. Let's jump to the 11th microphone. Now I am on the Audio-Technica AT2010, which goes for about $120. This is a handheld condenser microphone, three inches off, gain set at four o'clock. And here is how this compares to the Mojave. Let's jump back and do a whole bunch more. I am running out of things to say, but again, we are on the Mojave. Here is how it sounds. Next mic. Now we are on the Shure Beta 58A. This goes for about $170. Three inches off, gain set at 430, check the lower third, and here is how this sounds compared to the Mojave MAD. Let's jump back and do more comparisons. Who knows how many of these we have done, I have lost count, I have lost my mind, and let's... Now we are on the Bayer Dynamic TGV70D, this also goes for $170, three inches off, gain set at 430, and here is how this compares to the Mojave MAD. Check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these in post, and let's do more. It really is amazing that I haven't been put away, but we are back on the Mojave. Here's, here's how it sounds. Let's go to another mic. Now we are on the Jay-Z Mics HH1, same distance, same gain setting. This also goes for about $170, and here is how it sounds compared to the Mojave. We have some more to do, so let's get to it. We are on the Mojave, and we are on the home stretch. Let's jump to the next microphone. Now I am on the Blue Encore 200, which is an active dynamic microphone. This goes for about $150, three inches off, gain set at 430 with phantom power engaged. And here is how this compares to the Mojave. If I am not mistaken, we have two or three more to go, but first, this is the Mojave, three inches off, gain set at 430, check the lower third, let's jump to the next one. 
Next, we are on the Earthworks SR314, which is another handheld condenser microphone. This goes for about $700, 3 inches off, gain set at 1 o'clock, and here is how this compares to the MAD. Let's jump back to it. Okay, we are back on the Mojave for the penultimate microphone. Here's how it sounds. Let's jump to the penultimate microphone. Now we are on the Neumann KMS105. Hello, Neumann. This goes for about $730, and it is another handheld condenser microphone, 3 inches off, gain set at 3 o'clock, and here is how this compares to the Mojave MAD. Let's jump back and do one final comparison, I think. And I am afraid you all know what the final microphone is going to be, but before we jump to it, here is the Mojave MAD, here is how it sounds. Let's jump to that last microphone. And finally, we are on the Neumann U87AI. Hello, Neumann. This goes for about $3,700. I am on the cardioid polar pattern. No pads, no filters. Three inches off, gain set at 11 o'clock. And here is how this sounds. No more comparisons to do. Which of these microphones was your favorite? Let me know in the comments down below. And now let us jump to the music test. <laughs> do not know what I will do today, but I know that it will be watching X-Files again. There was a weird note in there, but hey, who wouldn't want to be a, an FBI agent if your partner was Scully, I suppose. That's the one caveat. The governmental bureaucracy would kind of take the joy out of it, but being partners with Scully would reinstate the joy. Gives you something to think about, doesn't it? I don't know what, but it's something. Let's go to the conclusion because this has nothing to do with microphones. All right, I think that it's pretty obvious that Mojave is coming into an incredibly crowded market, which is clear because I compared it against 17 microphones and I could have included 17 more, but I think they're right. They aren't like the other girls. But as far as the pros, the treble and air on this microphone are incredibly dominant, but it seems to handle those upper frequencies really well, and they don't come across as overly sharp or sizzly or biting. They handle that boost in the top end extremely well. Also, the plosive rejection, my air conditioner just turned on, but the plosive rejection on this microphone is respectable. It does let some air through, but I have heard significantly worse microphones in terms of rejecting and removing that air. Also, I found the background noise rejection on this microphone to be pretty good. Mainly when I was in the untreated space, it rejected quite a bit of reverb, and the clicky keyboard, it rejected that pretty well also. Then as far as cons, I need to bring up the top end of this microphone again. I do think it handles those upper frequencies really well, but if you have a really sibilant voice, I think it may become quite problematic. And secondly, the handling noise rejection on this microphone could be better. There was still a lot of handling noise just moving the microphone back and forth that made it into the recording. And now, what are my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone? On the electric guitar, it wasn't my favorite because it does give us a bit more of a V-shaped sound. The microphone has a lot going on between 100 and 200 hertz. Then we get a little bit more of a recessed midsection, which is not something I'm particularly keen on for electric guitar. Then the microphone captures a lot of that top end information. It handles it well because it doesn't come across as grainy or sizzly or sharp. It's just not a sound that I am going to be reaching for on the electric. Next, on the acoustic guitar, I found myself really liking this. 
Everything is pretty much the same. We have a lot of information in the low mids and base. The mids are a bit recessed. And then we have this big treble and air boost, which exaggerates and accentuates the articulation on the strings. That's something that I really like on the acoustic. Just a little bit of a recessed midsection and a lot of liveliness. Li liveliness? I don't know why I'm struggling to speak today, but I found myself really enjoying the sound of this microphone on the acoustic guitar. Next up for singing, we get a very workable sound and everything remains consistent. Powerful bass and low mids, recessed midsection, then a lot of treble and air. The treble and air are going to be the main focus of this microphone. So if you're going for that really lively and really exciting sound, avoiding any kind of nasality because it does have that recessed midsection, I think it works quite well. If you're going for more of a tame, dull, dark, and smooth sound, I don't think this is the one you ought to be looking at. And finally, for spoken word, I'm not going to repeat all the same comments about the tone because it's the same with the low mids and bass, mids and treble and air. That's all the same. What I will say, this sounds very different from pretty much every other dynamic mic that I put it up against. The reason for that, in my opinion, is the treble and air frequencies, mainly the fact that it has a lot more of those. That leads to the microphone sounding much brighter, much more detailed, much more articulate, and much more open. Something to consider here though is those upper frequencies. If you have a super deep voice and you need some help with articulation, I think that can be flattering. But if you have a basic voice like me, I found myself leaning on the EQ to tame. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I found myself leaning on the EQ to tame a bit of those higher frequencies and get a little bit more aggressive with the de -esser. So if you have more of an average voice, maybe a higher pitched voice or a more sibilant voice, this microphone may not be the ideal fit for long form spoken word content because those upper frequencies could get a little bit fatiguing. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Mojave MAD for some people? Like I said, this microphone doesn't sound like pretty much any other handheld dynamic that I put it up against. So if you're looking for a handheld dynamic that has that much more treble and air forward sound, also doesn't have that same mid forward honkiness that is apparent on a lot of handheld dynamics, then I think this may be a good option for you because even though it is a very bright sounding microphone, it does handle those frequencies well. And other than those upper frequencies maybe being a bit sibilant and the handling noise being a bit much, I see no other deal breakers with this mic. All right, that is it for this video. That may have been the most microphones I have ever compared a microphone against. I haven't kept track, but that seemed like a lot. 17 microphones is a bit much. I am sure that 95% of people didn't watch that part. A lot of work for a few people. I do it for you. The one or two people who watch the entire microphone comparison, you're the person I do it for. But if you did find this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, big ol' thumbs down. If you want more videos, go ahead and hit the fart button, the subscribe button. That's an inside joke for my podcast. I am an idiot. If you want to hang out in a Discord server and talk about audio all day, podcastage.com slash Discord. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button or going to patreon.com slash podcastage and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to buy microphones and bring you these videos. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you in a week or so. Bye-bye. Well, boop.